Uh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with uh, information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, technical schools, training programs, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we are with Grand Valley State University. Welcome back, Amanda. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Good deal. You can go ahead and start your presentation. All righty. I'm going to share a screen here and get on the view screen. Um, we would normally look at that video, but I'm going to go through that. And you got me, right? Are we sharing my screen? <laughs> There we go. You got it? Okay, yes. I see your nod. Just want to make sure. Technology. There we go. Um, my name is Amanda Blanchett. I serve as an admissions recruiter for Grand Valley State. I'm specifically stationed in Metro Detroit. So I serve um, Oakland, Wayne, and Macomb County here on the east side of the state versus where our university is that we'll talk about later on the west side. So I'll leave the screen here for those watching. You are welcome to scan that QR code, which will just take you to a, a registration on our end to let us know that you joined us today. If you're watching the recording, similarly, you can absolutely scan that so that we know you joined us and would like to talk more about Grand Valley. Just gives us your information, lets us contact you if you have additional questions. So leave that just for another minute for those that might be getting their phones out. Um, there is a UR URL as well, and I can chat that here in a moment but I'll get through our presentation. Uh, always leave time for questions at the end, though if you have them, certainly let me know throughout. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna skip the videos too, just to make sure, because technology can stop uh, our progress here. So I wanna just start by talking about the, the mission of Grand Valley State. So as a, as a public institution, we do serve our state and nation for students who are looking to broaden perspectives, to see education as a way to get to your next steps, right? If you're thinking about that bachelor's, master's degrees, anything that might take you to whatever profession you're looking at, Grand Valley is here to help prepare you for whatever that might be. Now we do encompass over a hundred different majors and minors and options programs, all the things. So we aren't, we aren't suited for just one type of student or one type of program. We really want to be available to students across all disciplines. So we will be talking about some big high level academic conversation today, though, as you might narrow down into what you're really wanting to study or what you think you would like to do in college, we could absolutely set you up with the experts on our campus who would be more than willing to talk to you and geek out about whatever that topic might be. Might not be me as the expert because I have some broad uh, information about all things, but not very detailed about everything. So the point here is just to let you know that Grand Valley is going to be a, a resource for so many of you and what you're thinking about studying or what you want out of your college experience. My job is to make sure you're introduced to all those options. Your job is to then place them into, does this make sense for me? You know you best. I don't know you hardly at all. So it'll be important that as you hear what I'm talking about, you process that in your head like, is that what I'm thinking about for my college experience? Is that what I think it will look like, feel like, sound like? All of those pieces that matter to you, you start placing this information in those categories to see if this might be a good option for you next steps, okay? Now, our foundation of our education is what we call a liberal education, not relative to any political uh, idealism or anything that way, but liberal education means that we are exposing you across different disciplines to prepare you for whatever job that you might enter into. Truly making sure that you are prepared as a well-rounded human being entering the workforce, entering adult life, um, all to prepare you for what you might face. So while you might have an idea of going into nursing, let's say, or you wanna be a future teacher, uh, perhaps you would like to go into the police academy at Grand Valley, you'd like to be an officer. We will give you all of those training and, and skill sets for that specific career. We'll also ask that you take a class in philosophy or diversity or a foreign language, um, really crossing those disciplines and making sure that you have access and, and, and ideas and perspectives beyond what you came in to study. Because ultimately, we know that that is going to broaden your worldview, help you meet other students who think differently than you, look differently than you, uh, act differently than you, right? Because that's only going to prepare you better for what the world looks like in real time. So 
The liberal, liberal foundation is something you'll walk through typically in those first two years that you're taking classes across the general education requirements. And then you dig into that major of choice, typically in your junior and senior years, okay? Now, beyond that, um, the, the, the classroom experience is really a foundation of, of where we're starting here at Grand Valley. We are what we call a mid-size institution, about 23, 24,000 students year to year. However, our average class size, as you see, is 26 students. So for you all in a virtual learning environment, you have already accommodated what your learning experience is, it will be for you, right? You found what works, you have skills that, that work for you and in, in how you learn best, right? So we think that making sure you're aware of what we do on our end to help you learn best is important. So our average class size being smaller, um, the largest class you'll ever see is really around 100 students. There's not even a classroom that accommodates more than that. So any of those larger classes that might be, let's say, an intro to chemistry or a psychology course, courses that are required for a lot of majors and a lot of students, you'll also have a lab requirement on the side of that, a separate day of the week where you're meeting with a smaller group of students. Um, similarly, going over that content, making sure you have questions answered, that kind of thing in any of those larger opportunities, okay? Additionally, we do pride ourselves on teachers that teach, that we have faculty on our campus that are intentional about your classroom experience. Um, and I did go to Grand Valley, so here's some of me and my story weaved into this conversation. My professors cared. I had ones that I, I personally had cell phone numbers of that I could check in when I missed something or just take a look at clarification. Um, I had one actually who at the beginning of each semester that I had her a couple times, um, we would introduce ourselves to the class with some kind of story about who we are, something about us, whatever. So based on that story told, the rest of the class would then nickname you. So the rest of the semester, I would be called by that nickname alone, not by Amanda. Um, I would sign my emails with that nickname. I would write my papers under that nickname because the class knew me as that name. So personally, I got to know my classmates based on their backgrounds and their stories. I'm not even sure I knew everyone's real name by the end of the semester because that's how we called each other. But the professor was intentional about building community in our class, making sure we knew one another, not just sitting next to you and then exiting the class at the end. It was important that those those relationships and community in the classroom helped us learn. We were comfortable with each other. We would learn from each other. So that is the goal for our classroom experience to be intentional about how you learn best, okay? Now, outside of that, I do wanna to touch on the Honors College because it, it does operate in the same realm of our academic conversation, but it is what we consider a college within a college. So our Honors Program is for a learner who loves learning for the sake of learning, meaning you like to dig deeper in the content, you're going to read the extra readings, or you're going to do some extra research just because you're curious, that Honors College is going to support that type of learning environment. So you do have smaller classes, you'll have more of a, more of a cohort experience where those that you come in with will kind of move along the same path as you. They also teach based on topic, not subject. So whereas I mentioned earlier, you might be taking classes in philosophy or diversity or whatever, this program will actually take and, and rip apart a certain topic. So maybe the theme of that semester is sustainability, for instance. And so each week of the semester, they're going to look at sustainability as a topic from all different lenses. So the first week might be, what is the impact of sustainability on the economy? Okay, so you've got your social science kind of perspective coming in with a professor from that discipline talking about the impact. Then the next week, might be sustainability on the environment. So what is the impact of recycling and reusable energies, all those things? How can we look at it from that lens? So students are really digging into topics a lot differently than the traditional general education requirements. But if that at all sounds interesting to you, they have a really nice uh, self-assessment for students to kind of walk through, answer some questions about who you are and how you learn to see if this is a good fit for you. So this is an alternative to our general education requirements Again, places emphasis on teachers who care that are really digging into those topics with students. You actually can work through this curriculum over your four years at Grand Valley and, excuse me, and do independent research with one of our faculty members as well. So all good options as you're thinking about how you dig into academics at Grand Valley. Um, part of what I also experienced at Grand Valley was my learning environment that expanded the classroom, right? I had my classroom environment. I did all my classes, I got all my credits. However, 
What I recall most about my college experience were things that I was doing outside the classroom, where I was applying what I was learning, getting my hands wet, figuring out things on my own based on how I learned. So the first thing there is about research. When I was in high school thinking about research, I conceptualized like lab coat, goggles, we're going to cure some disease, right? Which is absolutely research and absolutely helpful in the world that we live in. However, research happens across all disciplines, meaning if you want to figure out why commercials impact behavior, you want to do some marketing research, that's research and that's done on our campus. You want to figure out how dance could be impactful for uh, adolescents who went through trauma, right? There's research with the psychology of that, integrating dance and therapy and all these things, right? So research happens when you are curious about something and want to dig deeper. Grand Valley students, there's about one in four will participate in formal research. Others um, might do it on the side. They might do it as an internship or uh, perhaps you're getting paid for your research on campus as a job, you've got options to dig deeper into that, which again, applying the knowledge you've learned can only be most helpful as you walk into jobs later on and you've said, I have researched that or I have, I do know more about that. Otherwise, we've got our study abroad opportunities. Um, Grand Valley is actually ranked number six in the country for the amount of students we send abroad. Um, and I mean, Grand Valley is a, a state school. We're not a, a huge campus or with a well-known um, you know, campus environment, but number six means that we are sending a lot of students abroad across a, a variety of countries. So we are able to get you to six of the seven continents, Antarctica not being one of them, not a huge draw for students but we can allow you to partner with other institutions if we don't have a program in a country you want to go. I was lucky enough to study abroad twice in my undergraduate experience. Um, and mind you, I'll talk about this more later, but I'm a first-generation college student, meaning my parents did not attend college. So all of this was very new to me and I took advantage of any opportunity uh, afforded me. So I plugged in with mentors, I found scholarships, I asked questions, I figured out what I could do in those four short years to make it the best experience possible. And part for me was study abroad. I wanted to see the world in a time that um, someone else could help me pay for it. And I had that set apart time to do it. Outside now I have kids and a life and a job. I can't just leave for four months to, to visit another country. So study abroad for me, I did one um, with a partnership program throughout the university where our, our, the university uh, in Ghana, where I spent four months, was trading students with Grand Valley. So me as a student at Grand Valley went to the University of Cape Coast, which is in Cape Coast, Ghana, right on the equator. I specifically went in the winter months because I wanted to escape Michigan for a bit and spent time in Ghana where I was in their, I was in their classes. I was living in their dorms, living with other international students. So a huge part of, of how I live my life today were lessons that I learned there about diversity, about culture, about food. Um, there was so much that I gained just by living there, right? Um, not to say it wasn't a challenge. I mean, I chose a third world country and I wanted that experience, but I didn't have running water for a couple of months in my dorm. And so uh, just my own resiliency was something that I gained from that experience. My other trip was in Nicaragua, which is in Central America. I did that with um, a faculty-led program, meaning my professor actually went with us to Nicaragua. We studied together, we went on the tours together, we stayed in the dorms together. Uh, it was a nice way to be kind of the comforts of home that went with me, meaning I could speak English with them where everyone else around me was speaking Spanish. Um, I was able to navigate a country directionally and culturally with others that can bounce ideas. So there's a lot of ways you can do it, be it those partnerships or faculty-led, some are as long as a year, some can be just a couple weeks in a summer, you've got a lot of options, but Grand Valley is very willing to support students who are thinking about that with both the, the practical support of getting your visa and your passports and all those, but also the monetary support in form of scholarship. So we can come back to that when we talk about money in a bit, but all to say, those are really awesome opportunities. The last one here on this slide talks about our internships. You can see those numbers of students who participate in this experiential learning but internships are required for most of our majors. Might not be called an internship. Sometimes in the health field, that's called a clinical. Um, sometimes in the psychology world, it's called a practicum. All to say, you are getting some type of experience in the field you're looking to go into when you're going to school. So we're integrating that into your learning so that you're getting credit for it. You're getting um, some reflection on it with people asking you questions. Why does this stuff matter? What did you learn from that? Um, and preparing you with connections. 
in those fields where you do want to go get jobs, you, you know someone, you can call on someone, you can help get those experiences that directly relate to that field, okay? So all of this just complementing what you're doing in the classroom to help build on skills that you will need after. I talked a bit earlier about how many programs we offer, truly limitless. You have 300 plus areas of study that encompasses both our undergraduate, our certificate programs, our master's programs, the doctorate level programs we offer. There is a lot of areas. So they are broken out into this list here, which colleges they sit under, but then you know there's, there's several dozen of, of majors within each of those colleges. Like I said, I am not an expert on all of them. I have my major that I did. I certainly have some quick tips on a lot of these ones, but if you are looking to talk specifically about our sonography program or our business school, engineering, whatever it might be, please let me connect you back to campus because they will be more than willing to chat with you about the, the specifics of how that major looks, what they require, different classes you'll take, um, that will be a good way. Now, I will mention, you might not know what you want to study. That is very okay. I came in undecided. Like I mentioned, my parents didn't go to college. So we didn't have like dinner conversations about what was a good major, what you should do in college, all that. So I specifically took a career exploration course my first semester at Grand Valley, where um, it was only a, an hour a week, actually. So pretty short, low uh, impact on my week. But in that short hour, I was taking strength assessments. I was kind of talking about what am I good at and how does what I'm good at relate to specific careers? Um, also, what am I not good at and how should I avoid things that would require me to use those skills? Um, I talked to different people whose jobs I thought were interesting, um, kind of informational interviews, getting acquainted with the world of work, and ultimately determined what majors might relate to my skills. So I ended up with a major in public and nonprofit administration, couldn't have told you what that was in high school. I didn't know that existed, but that was a way for me to kind of have some of my organizational businessy like skills, but with the passion I had to help people, right? Business, of course, being a skill that a lot of people can learn, but I wasn't interested in the corporate world of like building success in that way. I wanted to, to be, be able to support help people who couldn't, right? So I studied that nonprofit field. However, we talked about experiential learning. I ended up with a job in my undergraduate that introduced me to educational um, world where I worked for Upward Bound, if you've heard of that. It is a, a federally funded support program that helps students in need that might not have had the access to college information that they would have previously. So I worked for Upward Bound. I did that study abroad program. I loved college. I was very active and involved. So I ended up working in education. I've been in college admissions now for 10 years at different schools across the state and inter or nationally. So it's been a good opportunity for me to do that giving back, but with the skill sets that I learned in my program. Okay, so I will continue on again. Happy to answer questions about my experience or otherwise, if you have them, put them in the chat and you can ask them whenever, or I'll leave my information for those that have been watching this recording. I do wanna talk about campus because it really is my favorite part uh, about this presentation. This is just a snapshot of our Allendale campus. Now, Allendale is a um, rural town uh, in the city outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now I'll use my map and hopefully this translates well on screen, but obviously we're here-ish, all of us kind of Metro Detroit, I'm assuming, based on your school. You drive two and a half, three hours, you're gonna hit Grand Rapids, Michigan, second largest city in the state. Um, right behind Detroit, obviously. And then 20 minutes outside of that major city is Allendale. Allendale um, is a college town. You've got this, this beautifully encompassed college environment where everything you need is very walkable for you. So what you see in the picture, this giant glass one is our library. That's new within the last 10 years. Um, you've got the Kirkhoff Center, which is our student union, this beautiful clock tower that just tells everyone when they need to be to class. If you were to go back here where those trees are, you've got all of our student departments, as well as most of the academic buildings. Continuing on further that way in the picture, you're gonna hit our North neighborhood, which is where most of our first year students live, most of our dining facilities and recreation. So you've got the free gym of free use for students. You've got the field house for any athletes that might be thinking of playing D2 sports at Grand Valley. Um, plenty of parking spaces for anyone that wants to bring their car to campus. All of that exists outside what this picture can show. 
Um, I am biased because I did get married on campus. So I think it's beautiful at any season, but specifically in the summer when I had my wedding here. Um, but it is a campus that really allows students to take advantage of everything that's around. Like I said, being walkable to things mean you don't really have an excuse to not get to class or you don't have an excuse to not take advantage of the free concerts and games and activities going on to build that community. Um, Grand Valley is a wonderful place to support all different learners. We've got people coming from uh, several international countries all over the state of Michigan and across the nation. So you've got people coming from all over who call Grand Valley home, um, and it really is a special, beautiful place. I mentioned we are right outside Grand Rapids, and this is a looping video. There's no sound to it, so you're not missing out, but it does just show a few glimpses of our Grand Rapids campus. Our main campus being in Allendale, um, we have expanded beyond that. So we have several academic uh, programs that are housed out of Grand Rapids. And so we've really built that campus up in the last couple of decades. You can see in the picture, it does have computer labs. It has a dorm. It has food options. It's got uh, the library spaces. It's got everything you really need uh, because students are often coming back and forth between those two campuses. The majors that are housed in Grand Rapids are on this next slide. So I'll let this video just play out for the second time so you can see it. Bookstore, lab, library, all of it. Um, I think this will be the end. So on this screen, it'll show you the campuses, or excuse me, the programs that operate out of this campus, our College of Education and Community Innovation, which that education obviously being one of them, but that nonprofit major I had, our hospitality and tourism major, our criminal justice is all housed within that, um, as well as social work. Then the College of Engineering and Computing, so any variety of our engineering programs, um, computer science, computer informatics, all that. And then our School of Business, or College of Business rather. So any marketing, finance, accounting, all of that housed within Grand Rapids campus. We have intentionally placed these programs downtown because this is where most of this industry exists, right? If you wanna go into criminal justice, wouldn't it be helpful if you were right across the street from the court systems? Similarly, business school students, they are, this is a, the second largest city in our state. So you've got Fortune 500 companies that are right across the bridge from where our campus is and where you're learning. So being able to build those connections, build a network while going to school was a really helpful resource for me even in those programs. So this campus truly is a really beautiful aspect of where we are located, being able to use the major city around us. The other part of our Grand Rapids location is the health facilities. So any students looking at nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, sonography, radiation tech, all things related to health, we have a health facility here. Um, it is housed within the medical mile of downtown Grand Rapids. So there's a mile long stretch of all, excuse me, all those major hospitals, rehab centers, facilities within the downtown area. We have placed three buildings there that operate um, for all our health students. So labs and things that have been hospital grade, um, actually during COVID when we they weren't sure how much capacity those hospitals would maintain, we actually transformed a whole entire floor of our one of our facilities to be a hospital um, that they could bring overflow patients to based on the facilities we have and the space and the location. Um, our students were really being able to use top of the grade facilities. So really helpful resource for students, again, when they're doing clinical hours and shadowing opportunities and just being around the world of medicine, our health facilities have been a great resource. This is our newest building, actually, the one that they're highlighting, that Finkelstein, um, that was built just in 2021. So this next slide just gives a name to those. Um, again, 100 plus majors in STEM. So that is obviously a growing industry for people that are looking into those fields, and it really does expand beyond just nursing. That might be the kind of catch-all phrase for a lot of students that are thinking about health, uh, but there's so many ways to pursue medicine that doesn't look like direct uh, patient care all the time. All right, we're continuing to go. I will say about our location, too. I mentioned our proximity to Grand Rapids, uh, which I think, especially coming from Metro Detroit, it is nice to know what you are near because Detroit obviously having an abundance of things around that you can go down the street and get to a Target or the movies or whatever. Allendale is going to feel a little more rural than that because as you continue driving west, you're actually going to hit water. This is Lake Michigan, obviously, if you know geography of our state. And so we're 30 minutes from that beach, which does get a little bit quieter, a little bit more rural. It's not quite the pace and energy of the east side of the state. So just helpful to know what you're around because you do commit four years of your life to this place. So you want to kind of know what resources exist for you. 
Moving on, I want to talk about housing. So this is a big aspect of students' experience on campus. We do require students to live on campus for their first year. Um, that is a requirement for us because we want you to build that community. We want to be a resource to you when you're moving away from home for the first time, you're navigating a new place. We want to be the support network for you as you transition. So making sure you know where facilities are on campus or uh, making sure you're getting along with roommates and professors and all the people that you are newly around. Um, our housing centers are a good resource for that. We do have a variety of housing options. So while we do ask that you stay on campus, we're not telling you exactly where you have to live. I will go through a couple of the slides that show the different layouts of our dorms. Um, and that's a big piece. We, we know that you all have different living needs, so we want to accommodate that. You also have um, living communities that can kind of support both the idea of things that you are, are, are learning and, and enjoy who you are with that living experience. So you've got a couple of those living communities. For an example, one is that Honors College I mentioned earlier. That's a living learning community. Our um, WISE program, Women in Science and Engineering, is a living learning community. So you have ways that you can connect those person uh, interests, uh, your, your demographics perhaps, your uh, um, identities, whatever, with the living experience. So, so the next couple of slides will show you some photos of how those dorms are laid out. These are traditional and cluster style. The only difference of these two is just the size of that room, as well as the building where they are housed. So cluster style is actually our newest facility. Um, it does have air conditioning. If students are interested, though, it's the middle of winter, and we know that Michigan doesn't get too hot during the academic school year. So it's not always a big draw, but students should know this. these are um, the, the newest, nicest buildings. These traditional styles are ones that we have had at Grand Valley since the origin, and they are what they sound, traditional. They are one room here, you've got two beds, all that furniture that you see in the picture comes with your dorm. You do share a bathroom, which is down the hall typically, and it's a hallway of guys, a hallway all of girls, so they're divided that way. Um, the shared bathroom is clean for you by Grand Valley staff. So it's not something that you have to maintain with that shared space. And they do have semi-private bathrooms where you can enter a, a whole room with a locked door that has a shower, a toilet, and a sink. Um, you also do have a whole roll of, of toilet stalls and sinks if you're just gonna go brush your teeth, for instance, but um, there is some privacy within those, those shared bathroom spaces. What I like about traditional style is it does foster that community. So you've got people in and out of their room. A lot of the times you're making friends, you're going to the same classes and the same dining halls uh, and just building a sense of, of ownership of your campus. This is your home and your place. And so it does do that well because everyone's got open doors and kind of in and out. I also like this option because it is the cheapest option. So when we talk about money, I will kind of refer to the different layers of housing costs, but this is the least expensive option. These two are our one bedroom and two bedroom apartment styles, and they exist for our first year students as well. Um, you can see in these photos where you have your own bathroom that you share with them, that roommate, as well as a kitchenette. So some folks are interested in that tiny kitchen space. If you do like to cook uh, or perhaps you have allergies that you already know you're going to need to make some of your own meals, this can be a nice option to have the kitchenette in these rooms. And then the difference of these two, you can see this second, the two bedroom option does have a door that closes behind you and your space. So maybe you're like, I'm an introvert and I'm going to need a little bit of time to myself. Those two bedroom options are a really nice way to get some of that space to yourself. Okay. The one bedroom, like I said, has these two amenities, but it is just one open room. Um, Again, both of these are also nice because you get more amenities, right? You have the options to cook for yourself, to use your own bathroom. Um, and so it's a little bit more private. Obviously, you won't see people in another room quite as often because a lot of your basic needs can be met in that space. But um, these are really nice facilities for students who know they might need that extra space. Uh, then in the middle of this, I'll just start with the top one here, that suite style. That's actually two traditional rooms combined with a bathroom in between. So you get that, that community of living because you're sharing space and sharing rooms but the bathroom's not quite shared with so many people. You're only sharing with those four that are in your suite. Um, though once you do enter that private bathroom space, that cleaning is on you. So that's what changes when you're in those private bathroom spaces. You're responsible to maintain that. Um, we do provide toilet paper, things like that, but you'll be bringing in a lot more of your own cleaning supplies and things to maintain that. 
Um, I will tell you, my husband, who I got married to on campus, he also went to Grand Valley and he lived in this suite style. Uh, he and his buddy, none of them knew each other. So they came in what we call blind, meaning you don't know your roommates. Grand Valley assigned them. Um, but they made friends very quickly. And what they did in their space, they actually moved all of the beds to the uh, one room. So they double bunked these four grown men in one room. The other room became their lounge. So they brought in their futon and their fridge and their gaming consoles, whatever they were going to do to just hang in that space. So one became the sleeping room, one became the, the chill room. So they really built their community that way. And friends were in and out, obviously, because it was just kind of a chill space. Um, but that's the way they operated their rooms. You can kind of move this furniture around, build it to whatever works for you and your roommates, suite mates. Um, but it is a really nice option because all of it fits and it's stackable and very easy to navigate those spaces. The bottom one here is our on-campus apartments. These are typically um, for upperclassmen students, though, especially as we've expanded and as COVID has changed housing uh, regulations and things over the years, a lot of first-year students are also being housed in on-campus apartments. You are able to get up to four bedrooms in these spaces, and you can kind of see there's more living room space and uh, more of a full kitchen in these areas. Um, as you are given a fuller kitchen, you also get a meal plan that's optional to you because in theory, you could make all of your own food in your room versus those smaller spaces that don't don't have a full kitchen to operate out of. Um, these are nice if you're looking to stay on campus after your first year as well. They are on the south end of campus, still very walkable and easy to get to, but you do kind of have more of your own private space outside of that first year experience that is often in the north neighborhood of campus. Um, I mentioned meal plans because you, as living on campus your first year, you will be assigned a meal plan. Students will typically have 14 meals a week, and we operate on a swipe system. So you swipe in and out of the dining hall to get that meal, or if you're in one of our all-you-can-eat styles, you just swipe in for entry, and then you can stay and eat as long as you want. So that is a nice perk of those swipes. Once you go through the week, your swipes don't roll over, um, so you do want to use as many as you can in the week, and then the new week starts. Some students feel like that's enough food. You know, you might not even eat breakfast or you eat at home for a meal on the weekend and then you come back, whatever. Um, you can kind of operate those meals as you wish. Um, others might decide they need more and you can add or subtract those meals. You also have what we call debit dollars that are loaded onto your card that operate just like cash in the convenience stores on campus or any of the campus restaurants. We do have a Starbucks, uh, a Subway, a Panda Express, um, and a sushi place. So if you are just looking to get um, one of those meals or a snack between classes, whatever, you just have debit dollars that are assigned to your card. Okay. I do want to talk about our campus community as well. Um, this is just a snapshot. Like I said, about 23, 24,000 students on campus coming from truly all over. Um, because we know that students are coming in with all different experiences and backgrounds, we do operate with 11 success, student success departments to support whatever it is that you might need. Maybe it is mental health counseling because moving away from home for the first time is more than you thought it would be and you just need to talk to someone. We absolutely offer those services and that is free to you as a student. You've already paid for that service. We'd love for you to take advantage of mental health counseling. You might need academic counseling because uh, this college world or one of the classes you just have to take and get through it is not what you thought it was. So you'll take advantage of tutoring services. Again, free to you. I am a huge advocate of taking advantage of things you've already paid for. Um, I was a student that I don't really do a lot of science day to day in my career or, or interest. And so the science class that I took um, really wasn't clicking for me the way I would have liked it to. So I took advantage of our tutoring center. And the, the girl who was a tutor to me was a student uh, as a with that major. So she loved this topic and could talk about it in her sleep. And so she was able to explain it to me in a way that my professor wasn't, right? He, that's how he taught. And I asked questions, but it just wasn't clicking. So helpful to hear it from another person and a peer. She was only a couple of years older than I was. So that tutoring service was, was helpful. Um, other success departments exist um, for different identities, maybe based on your gender, your race, ethnicity, um, your veteran status, whatever it might be. There are support networks for you as well, because again, acclimating to a new environment and people that you weren't used to being around could be a, a change for you. So 
across the board, whatever support you might need, it is our job to support you. If we are not feeling at home and not feeling supported, we are not doing our job well. And so we want you to, to name those needs and be an advocate for yourself as you transition to our campus so that we know you might need that support. Um, I'll mention one other support I was just thinking of, um, our Disability Support Resources, or DSR, that if perhaps you do need accommodations in your learning, um, extra time on a test, or a quiet room to be able to study, uh, things like that that may have supported your learning throughout high school, we can absolutely look at those accommodations in college. Um, I actually served as a student advocate for the disability support resources where I proctored different tests. So if a student, even if they broke their arm and just couldn't write for the exam, I would be able to go in and take their notes for them, write what they were telling me to write just as a support to them. So it exists for students with long-term disabilities, short-term stuff. You broke your leg, you can't get to class. We can absolutely give you a ride. Those kind of things will be supports for you. You'll see there a, a, a data point for a career advising appointments. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about internships and things. There are ways to get connected to the, the industries that you're looking at getting jobs in eventually while a student. So we have our campus-wide career, um, career fair actually coming up the end of this month where we bring in uh, over a thousand employers that come to um, what's called the Voss Place. It's downtown Grand Rapids, a big event space. And they'll line up at tables. You walk table to table with your resume, talk to different industries, meet people, get yourself in front of them. Uh, Grand Valley uh, facilitates that. We build some of those connections for you. And our career mentors are able to help you get prepared for that. How to talk to employers, how to sell yourself, how to make those connections. Okay. We talked about tutoring. Um, I'll mention here too with that faculty success. Uh, we do have a mentorship program. So if you are looking to have that direct level support from professional staff, we are able to set you up with our um, faculty support mentor service. And that way, again, you have advocates in your corner rooting you on along the way. You are not in it alone, be it the student mentors, our faculty mentors, or anyone in between. We are happy to support you. Part of the community that you build here is also outside the classroom with our campus involvement. So what you see a picture of here is my favorite night of the school year. It's called Campus Life Night. So this is where all of our student organizations line up, again, table by table, where you can kind of walk through, learn about them, sign up for club meetings. These truly do range from academic interest. Maybe you want to do a pre-law club because you're looking to be a lawyer and you just want to meet other students who are also doing that. It might be the Taylor Swift Club, which is one of our newest ones for just people who enjoy her music and follow her concerts, all those things. Um, I was involved on campus in the Senior Citizens Club, uh, where we just went to local senior citizen homes and uh, played bingo, painted nails, just chatted with that generation. In college, you really only see people that are your age or in that range. Um, and so it's fun to be able to connect with other generations. And again, it was something I was passionate about in that nonprofit realm, thinking that perhaps that could be a career option for me, but was truly just for fun in the beginning. There are clubs um, really across the board. My, my advice to you, if you're thinking about campus life on campus, whoops, go back, um, is our Laker Link, L-A-K-E-R, Laker is our mascot. Um, the Laker Link allows you to look at all the student organizations across the board, um, helps you connect to them. They have all their contact information, their clubs, what they're doing, so that you can kind of see how you might plug in. I glanced or talked about this earlier. Um, athletics tend to be a, a big piece of students' experience as well. Whether you're looking to play in college, we are a Division II program in the NCAA. So if you are looking to become an athlete on our campus, it is something that you'll go through with our recruitment, uh, athletic recruitment office, so that they are really checking eligibility requirements and places on the roster and money, scholarship, all that stuff, because it is outside of my realm of admissions. However, if you just want to be a part of athletics on campus, all games are free to you to watch. And so with your student ID, you're able to get a ticket to football, basketball, soccer, um, lacrosse, whatever it is that you'd like to watch. Those are free, which is a nice perk. Um, you also have club sports. So the club level is kind of like high school JV, where you are still competing uh, across the country excuse me, um, but you you don't have the varsity athlete schedule. It's not quite as intense, um, but still quite competitive. Then you have intramural sports, which I don't think are mentioned, not on this um, slide, but intramural sports are just played with other Grand Valley students, just for fun, for the, the free t-shirt and bragging rights, just to keep yourself active in whatever activity or sport you might've already played or when you're looking to join 
at a very low risk uh, level. So across the board, we'd love for students to connect with athletics if that is your interest. Now I'll talk briefly about admissions. We still have time, Tony, right? Do we have the full hour? Okay, I saw your nod, cool. Um, and I, cause I don't know exactly where everyone is coming from in terms of what grade you're in now and, and when you'll graduate, but I'll talk briefly about our admissions process. If you're in it now, I'll have some specific deadlines that I'd like you to be mindful of. But talk big picture here about what we're looking for. So an applicant to Grand Valley is going to give me an application, very generic name, phone number, contact, high school, uh, things you've been involved in, and a, and a signature. We don't even require essays. We don't require a test score this year. Um, and there's actually no fee this year as well. Um, so a pretty basic application. Then you'll submit to me a high school transcript that comes from your high school directly to me so that I can see the official record of your ninth through 11th grades at minima. Okay, so you do have to be a senior to apply. Um, we can't <clears throat> accept anywhere lower than that because we do need that those three full years of grades to make that decision. Um, we will look at the full picture of a student. So as we look at your grades, I'm looking for trends of those grades. Um, maybe the transition to high school wasn't exactly what you thought, and those ninth grade grades aren't looking as strong as they are now. Or potentially COVID happened, and those grades aren't what you thought they were either. And so we're looking at kind of where those grades sit. Um, maybe it's certain subjects that are your best or your worst, and we're kind of looking through that, that grade point average so I understand the full picture of what those grades display to me. So I will take a GPA calculation from ninth through 11th grade to us determine, determine your admissibility. We're looking generally at a 2.8 GPA or higher, so mostly a B average student, maybe some grades that brought below or have brought that up um, to get general admission at Grand Valley. Students that might fall in the range of a 2.0 to a 2.8, there is still conversation to be had about your eligibility to enroll. What we're looking for, again, digging deeper into those trends, different grades uh, and when where you're sitting, we also might ask to look at senior year grades, how you're progressing throughout this semester and this year of applying to see how those grades have improved. Um, and then we'll also be able to offer you specific supports to be able to, to achieve well at Grand Valley. So this is coming out of our Oliver Wilson Scholars Program, or we call it OWS. And that provides support for students who are falling in those GPA ranges that we know have potential to succeed, but we want to make sure that you have the resources to succeed. So we will give you some additional success coaching, some more intentional academic supports of, of study table times, of um, more, more regular meetups with, with academic support. Um, again, to give your best foot forward and how you're going to progress to college world. So all to say, all of these factors we're looking at as we make an admissions decision to Grand Valley. There are um, I'll talk about, yeah, I'll talk about budget here and financial aid, but I can come back to some of the deadlines and things in a moment. But um, this is a, a generic look at what you're looking at for an out-of-pocket cost to Grand Valley. Now, most of us being Michigan residents, I'm not assuming that there's many coming into this presentation without Michigan residency, but you're looking at about 22000 Um, This is a sticker price, right? We are, we are looking at what we say it costs to attend Grand Valley. Is this what most of you will pay? Absolutely not. Um, we have not even talked about financial aid yet and how you will get free money and scholarship money and all these things, but this is just a general look at what we cost. Now, this is pretty average for what you're looking at for most in-state schools, um, if not on the lower end of that. The tuition there is that $13.5. The room and board, I mentioned I'd come back to that because this quote here is for the traditional living styles, the ones that are the cheapest. So $9,200 for a year with that meal plan. Um, as you progress into the ones with nicer things and room and kitchens, you'll pay closer to 10,000 or 10,500 for the different spaces. So factoring that in of what you anticipate college to cost and what you are willing to put out for that cost, um, just keeping in mind of how that might fluctuate. Now I mentioned this is a sticker price. We are not attempting to pay for this all out of pocket. So we want to start thinking about how can we get this lower? And that's gonna be through our Office of Financial Aid. I'll come back to that last slide in a minute. But the Office of Financial Aid will of course be looking at your eligibility uh, based on the FAFSA. The FAFSA is your free application for federal student aid, that long acronym, which just means that they are digging deeper into your financial situation and how your family has prepared to pay for college. So once putting all this information into the FAFSA, 
it will generate a number that helps us colleges understand how much can your family afford to contribute to your college, okay? From that number, we understand what your academic, or excuse me, your, your financial need is. So the more need you have, the more aid you will get from Grand Valley. Um, aid comes in the form of first scholarships. So this is money that you have earned based on things you have done. So it could be your grades, could be test scores, could be an application you put in, <coughs> excuse me, to our scholarship database that will grant additional aid based on, again, what you have done. Grants are also allocated to you based on need. Some of those grants are coming from our institution, directly from our pockets to yours. Some are coming from the Michigan, the state of Michigan, federal aid, or excuse me, state aid budgets. Um, and newest this year is the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, which grants $5,500 for students with the most need from the state of Michigan, which is the largest reform of state aid in our state for a very, very long time. And um, so that's a very exciting initiative. Some of those grants come from federal aid as well, meaning from the, the national government. Those are things like the Pell Grant. Um, Pell Grant, again, for students who have the most need will get the most grant aid. Once these two have been exhausted for what we're able to give you in free money, we will offer you loans. Obviously a very realistic way to pay for college, but you wanna be mindful of how much you're taking out because you pay those back. Um, most of those are coming from the federal government, though some can come from private agencies or state agencies, um, things like that. Then lastly, a way to fund that education is with student employment. So getting a job on campus. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you with, especially with your virtual learning environment, you may already work. You already balance school and many other things. And so work might be a very natural thing for you to look at when you're on our college campus. We have more jobs than there are students who can take them on our campus because it takes a lot of people to run the university. So perhaps looking at jobs in um, the dining hall or uh, we have parking services, you've got different offices, we've got the rec center, um, dorms. I mean, there's a lot of student uh, employees that help us run effectively. So these are all ways to get money in your pocket, money uh, into that aid package so that you have a more realistic understanding of what your out-of-pocket costs. Um, I skipped this slide and I'll come back to it because I just want to mention what we call our Grand Valley Pledge. This allows students who, with the most financial need to earn full tuition coverage at Grand Valley State. So students, uh, the eligibility is based on that FAFSA and you will have to have earned your family together earn less than $50,000 a year. Um, there are different criteria based on assets and things, but that median income of our state of Michigan is in around 50. And so anywhere below that, Grand Valley is saying, you, we want to support your education. We don't want this to be a barrier for you. So we will remove the cost of tuition. Now, of course, there are still costs outside of that. So um, that's where maybe some of those loans and things come into play. But tuition will all be covered by free money to you. This is open to all students in the state of Michigan. It used to be just for certain counties in our state. Um, but now we've opened it up to the whole county, or excuse me, whole state. Um, the next one, we'll talk a little bit more. It's opening that link because I accidentally clicked on it. So let me keep moving here. Okay, let me talk briefly about some of these deadlines. I mentioned I'd come back to this because um, scholarships at Grand Valley uh, based on grades do have an expiration and that is March 1st. So my seniors who might be listening to this, you must apply by next week, Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, we turn to March. And that at that point after March 1st, I cannot grant any merit-based aid to students. Um, juniors or, or younger in the audience, that will probably be similar in future years, but don't quote it. Make sure you check back next year when you are going through the application process to ensure you're following that deadline as well. But all students who apply by March 1st will be eligible for the merit-based aid. Those do range um, anywhere from 11,000 to as low as $1,000 a year for all four years based on uh, a combination of your grades and then sometimes a test score, depending on those top ones that do give you almost full tuition, do require a test score at a certain level. Um, and we can talk about those. I can send the link directly to Tony. The My Scholarship link is also an important resource to think about, especially my seniors, because that deadline is also coming up with March 1. The My Scholarship database kind of pulls together all of our donors' money that have said, this is, uh, we want to support this student from this background, with this experience, with this criteria, all these things. And this is what we'll ask of them to submit. 
and then we will make a decision based on aid. So these scholarships are variable. Uh, they range in amount of money, how many years you might get, what criteria they have, but that database kind of pulls all of them together and you can apply to a variety of them. I paid for an entire semester of Grand Valley with other people's money through that My Scholarship database because I made it my job to find ones that supported me as a first generation college student, uh, as, a, as a woman studying what I was studying and the different things I was involved in. Um, I found money to pay for my semester because I, like I said, I was going in a nonprofit and it wasn't gonna give me a lot of money. So that was a helpful way to help me pay for college. Uh, the next couple slides are going to walk through those different criteria. So I mentioned based on grades and or, excuse me, test score, this is what you're looking at. So I'll just go through these. I'm not going to read the criteria because I'll actually send a link that you can look at this more closely. But the Laker Award for Excellence, um, as well as the faculty and presidential. So those four levels of scholarships are based on just your grades and test scores in, college, or in high school. Um, these two are based on where you attend high school or if you've been involved in any uh, support program, be it the Upward Bound, like I mentioned earlier, any trio programs, Midnight Golf is popular in Metro Detroit, um, Dollars for Scholars, also just different supports uh, that we have partnered with to support their students who come to Grand Valley. So both of these are dependent on certain schools and certain participation. Then I'll just briefly mention this timeline. This is my last formal slide and we're nearing in on the hour, but I'll just mention, especially for those students who are thinking ahead to next year, fall is when we look for those applications. Um, October is when you can start applying for with the FAFSA, though you can certainly still continue to apply. Um, they do have a priority deadline of March 1. So getting that FAFSA in so that we can give you as much money as possible, that is intended for you there. Um, this is gonna give you some kind of guideposts on when you can progress through different financial aid and scholarship applications. By May 1, we're really asking for students to let us know if they're coming to Grand Valley. Um, that is with your housing application and setting up orientation, those enrollment next steps so that we know to save you a spot on our campus. Um, and then July 31st, we didn't talk about this, but um, if let's say, you know, senior year, you're continuing to improve your grades and you have a higher GPA, which qualifies you for a better scholarship, we'll actually take your updated grades all the way up until July 31st of, of the year that you're attending Grand Valley. So we can give you the highest scholarship that you are eligible for. So these deadlines just kind of guide posts into how you're progressing through your enrollment process, or again, looking ahead to a future year. So I will now just leave my information up here for you. Uh, I mentioned, again, I'm Amanda and I am your resource. I serve, like I said, three counties here in Metro Detroit and happy to chat more individually. Um, if you need another one of these presentations, whatever it might be, I am happy to help. So I'll pause if you want this information if any other questions might have popped up. You guys feel free to unmute and ask Amanda your questions or if you like, you can type it in the chat and I'll read it for you. Sounds great. I'll wait here. I might actually go back to that first slide. Um, if students have just popped in, then you have this link that you can. Oops. There, I'll leave that here just in case folks want to grab that link um, so you can get in our database. That'll just go to the, a form that you can let us know that we're here while I wait for questions. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any questions or comments, then we will bring this session to a close. Thank you so much, Amanda. It was an excellent presentation as always. And thank you guys for joining us. Thank um, you. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy the Monday, the sunshine. Yeah, thank yeah. Thank you. It was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. All right. See you guys. Bye. Amanda, I did want to ask you, um, you said you had an upcoming uh, fair, career fair. Yes. Yeah, I just got the email about that today. Could you send me the digital link um, for that yeah. flyer so that I can publish that with sure. our students? Career fair. Yeah, it's um it is over in Grand Rapids at the DeVos place. If you're familiar, right downtown, beautiful facility, but 
Um, they do it twice a year. They, the fall ones typically like October. And then, yeah, this one I saw is next week. So I'll send it. Good deal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anything else that you need from me? Um, for now? We're, you always we're, got me just in case, but. Yeah, yeah. We're, oh, um, if you also have uh, a digital flyer advertising your Grand Valley Promise Scholarship, oh, sure. that yeah, would be you. great as well. Yeah, if nothing else, I know, like I can send the link to the website. I'm trying to remember if I have any digital publications of it. Um, I will dig and see if we do, but nonetheless, the website will be a helpful way to get clicked around on there. Yeah. Thank you again, cool. Amanda. Talk to Thanks you later. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye now. Bye.